Namaskaram Singh. My name is Vishnu Vishnu Saranshukla. Uh, I can talk in both in English and Russian, but today I'll try to be in, in English so to be more clear for everybody. <laughs> Uh, myself, I born in uh, Prayag city, it's uh, very close to Varanasi and my father, he's a professor of uh, Sanskrit Vyakarana in uh, Banaras Hindu University. Right now he's the head of department also. I'm not very much a good student of Vyakarana, I'm always uh, good in mathematics and uh, Jyotisha. So I'm, I study Jyotisha Sastri in uh, Banaras Hindu University as well. I'm a computer programmist. I'm more good with computers. <laughs> and uh, from the childhood, I used to practice yoga and uh, I like to study the philosophy behind uh, in, in inner consciousness. So my main uh, work at the moment is a yoga teacher. I teach yoga, yoga philosophy to students all over the world as who I can met by internet, by live. <laughs> at this moment. Uh, basically, I'm uh, living here in Russia almost uh, five years. So it's been 2015 when I was moved here in Russia. And since this time, I'm living here and uh, almost 2017, I'm living completely in St. Petersburg city. So three years from now, I'm here in St. Petersburg. I have a, I married a very beautiful Russian wife, so I'm also a half Russian now. <laughs> can it be di can, can it be different? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, it gets there. It yeah. was with me, so I can understand that. Okay, so let us start your uh, paper. I would want to hear some Mangala Shloka maybe as well. Yeah, yeah. So today um, I bring an introductory uh, presentation about the work of Patanjali in the uh, uh, Yoga Sutra and the Mahabhashya. So if you have any question uh, in the end of the practice, please ask uh, my, with my due respect. I try to answer as much as I could. Uh, the work uh, of Maharshi Patanjali on Yoga philosophy and Sanskrit Vyakarana. And thank you, first of all, everybody who are invited me here to be today. So let's begin. The Mahashi Patanjali is one of the uh, interesting figure in a, in a practice of yoga and also whoever studied the uh, Sanskrit Vyakarana. And before I start about talking about Patanjali, I would like to start with a Mangal uh, mantra, which we every time we pray whenever we start uh, yoga practices, uh, especially due respecting the Patanjali. So, as me thought. Om Yogena Chittasya Padena Vacha Malam Sarirasya Chavaitekena Yopakarotam Pravaram Munina Patanjali Pranjali Ranjatosmi. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the meaning of this mantra is uh, to be uh, glad to be uh, honoring the Patanjali who gave us the knowledge of uh, 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 Yoga Sutra the knowledge of uh, Mahabhash Vyakarana and also making us healthier with giving the knowledge of the Ayurveda. So there have been a lot of uh, uh, interpretations about uh, who there are three different Patanjali's, but many of the uh, authors and uh, great scholars have been found that there must be uh, one single Patanjali who was being such great to give that all the three knowledge. So Mahat Patanjali was, uh, there's a not exactly known time when he was there, but uh, mostly people have been found that by the information, by his work, that he must be around uh, the second century BC, before Christ. And one of the, he was the great uh, work he had done on uh, the authoring uh, the number of Sanskrit uh, Vyakarana works. The, there are many, uh, one of the uh, work of his was Mahabhashya, which was the ancient treatise on Sanskrit grammar, grammar and linguistic based on the Stadhaya of Parini. So it was made 
basically his work was on the uh, grammatical linguistic work on Astadhyay of Pani. Uh, the most clear fact uh, that we should understand the timeline of um, uh, Mahabha from the Mahabhashya about Patanjali that he was wrote around uh, 150 BC because one of his uh, uh, one of his work is written in Mahabhashya uh, telling about the present tense uh, uh, about the Shung dynasty uh, Pushamitra king where he was doing the Ashwamega Yagya and the way he described this uh, line it was more like in present tense so because of uh, during the time of uh, Pushamitra we understand that around 150 BC uh, must be the time of Patanjali. Uh, is one of the three famous Sanskrit grammarians uh, of ancient India, the, as Panini and uh, Katyan, who precede Patanjali. Uh, there are mythology also around uh, Patanjali that uh, we uh, believe that uh, he was avatar or incarnation of Sheshnaga, who was a resting place of God Vishnu, the, with thousand uh, faces of snake. Uh, still in India, there is a festival we call uh, Naga Kupa, which uh, used to be like um, the festival where we pray to the snake god, uh, uh, Sheshnaga, and also we do pray to the Patanjali on the same day to honor his uh, knowledge, to honor his uh, great wisdom. <laughs> uh, there, there's, there's a most important work of Sanskrit Vyakarana. What he did is by giving us the knowledge about the Mahabhasya, the, the the commentary on Panini work. Uh, it was uh, it was form of curated the commentary of uh, Katyan uh, Katyan Vartik also. There's a major influential work on Sanskrit grammar and linguistic. It was with Patanjali that uh, the Indian tradition uh, scholarship became uh, reached to the most definite form, more understandable form, uh, because the after the sutras of Pani, it was very hard even for the scholars to understand exactly to Vyakarana and Pani, uh, Patanjali was first like he read by his Mahabhasya to understand uh, more interestingly how to understand the Pani Sutras. Uh, he also uh, basically uh, talked about uh, the Shiksha and Vyakarana, how to uh, make the Shiksha, how to do the teaching of Vyakarana, uh, the accent of the sound and uh, the morphology of Vyakarana. There was uh, uh, also uh, influence of uh, Nirukta etymology and is discussed here and etymology of uh, semantic explanations. Uh, people interrupt his work to defense of Panini, whose sutra are elaborated uh, meaningfully, but uh, the main contribution of Patanjali is a uh, treatment of the principle of grammar and is uh, innovated by him. Panini also examined Katyan work. He also have done, you know, Mahabhasya talk about Katyan work also and uh, introduced semantic discourse into grammar, which was further elaborated by Patanjali in such extended that Mahabhasya can be called a mix of grammar as such as the philosophy of grammar. So that's a little bit intro about what he was working and I'll go a little bit also about Mahabhasya later. I just come to a little bit on philosophy part. Among the six orthodox, there are the main six orthodox school in, in India uh, about yoga, about philosophy. One of the is also yoga and other are Naya and Naya, Vaishak, Vaish, Vaisheshk, uh, Sankhya, Mimans, Ivedanta. So there are six uh, major orthodox school of uh, philosophy in India. And one of the main is uh, yoga also. Uh, there are several practices of uh, yoga in Hinduism, Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga, and Lai Yoga, and Hat Yoga. However, by yoga, one generally also understands the Astanga Yoga Patanjali, described in a separate text of Yoga Sutra, which is also known as Raj Yoga system. So yeah, Raj Yoga is a complete set of system of uh, comp compiling the Astanga system, Yam Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratihara, Dharana, Dhyana, and Samadhi, as well as uh, Kriya Yoga system which have been uh, Patanjali wrote in his second uh, chapter at Sadhana Pada. The Yoga Sutra Patanjali was compiled between 500 BC to 400 CE with the 960 sutras, uh, which is like a prism on yoga. Patanjali gave a real uh, foundation because uh, there's a different time period of uh, yoga and the uh, history of yoga. 
and one of the which I found the most classical and most golden period of uh, the yoga philosophy was around the time of Patanjali Yoga Sutra when it was occurred. So it's created the school of philosophy, uh, yoga philosophy, more uh, understandable and more uh, easy to uh, spread to, uh, with people who are practicing yoga and who are interested in yoga philosophy. Uh, Patanjali gave uh, and the great work what is that in the in the school philosophy with Veda and Upanishad the, there was many other books was uh, there during the time with people were studying a uh, lot of text uh, in Vedas uh, about yoga yoga practices more by the chanting the hymns in Veda Upanishad Upanishad was uh, was many hundred uh, uh, complex books uh, which was very hard to understand at this moment to find out the main terms of yoga and yoga philosophy from there. But Bhagavad Gita was one of the way to understand the, the Jnana Yoga and Raj Yoga and Karma Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. But the, the Raj Yoga system, was, which was a very unique system, was basically uh, became more popular between people when uh, come the Bhashya, of Bhashya, first Bhashya of uh, Yoga Sutra and when the Sutra of Patanjali self, self occurred uh, during uh, 400 CE this time. There's a, I want a little bit to let us to understand what exactly is Mahabhasha and what is the work is there. So Mahabhasha is a, is called, it's it actually just, just called Bhasha, but in India we see it as a very great work, so we call it like Mahabhasha, but generally it's just a Bhasha, this commentary uh, of, on Panini uh, work. Uh, at, which is attributed to Patanjali as a commentary of selected uh, rules of Sanskrit grammar from Pandini treaties, the Astadhyay, as well as Katyana Vartika. And elaborated of Pandini pran, uh, grammar, that's our 84 Ahaniki. Ahaniki is uh, one Ahaniki is like one uh, do you work in a day. So which, there are 84, or some people say there are also 82 Ahaniki, but they are, uh, there is still a doubt in there. It is dated around the uh, 2nd century BC, the time of uh, which we see the timeline of uh, Patanjali. The dating of Patanjali in, and his Mahabhasya established by a combination of evidence, those from a Maurya Empire period. So that's I talk about the Sakh uh, Vansh uh, uh, king. He was doing this uh, Yagya and doing this Yagya was there was a uh, uh, many example was taken in um, also in Mahabhasya. Patanjali in Mahabhas relate how words and meaning are associated together. Patanjali claims uh, Shabda Pramana. Shabda Pramana is, was, is uh, one of the many value of words inherent in them and not derived externally. To the, the meaning of words are coming more into from itself, itself, not from external sources. The meaning associated is, association is naturally coming there. And uh, Mahabhasya begin with uh, self like Sabdanu Shasana, like the sentence in which Patanjali has significantly used the word uh, Sabdanu Shasana in the sense of the science of grammar instead of most popular uh, term like Vyakarana. The main function uh, grammar is to regularize the use of uh, Shabda words and not to create Shabda. So it's not just about uh, creating Shabda, but regularize them and how to pronounce them, how to understand their meaning internally. In Mahabhasya also revealed the existence of Vedan, Vedanga, the sixth auxiliary science of prevention of the Vedas. In that period, a uh, passage quoted in the Mahabhasya under the name of Agama, which translates uh, as, there's a there's term in there, that a Brahmin should lean, uh, learn and understand the Veda with its six auxiliary science without expecting any reward. So he basically, he focused on that thing that, uh, that the person should who are practicing uh, Vedas or who try to understand the Veda, uh, other created words from the Vedas. So they should understand first the auxiliary signs, the Vedanga, and then go with the Vyakarana word with this. Uh, Patanjali also has quoted the hymns of Rig Veda in the Mahabhasya, which uh, interpreted in the sense of grammar. According to his explanation, the bull spoken in the hymn. Rig Veda 58.3 represent a uh, Shabda grammar which has four horns, that is, uh, four parts of speech, nouns and verbs, uh, prepositions and particles, three feet, the three divisions of time, past, present, and future, and two heads. 
that is two kind of words, eternal and non-eternal, and seven hands and seven cases. So he described uh, just a whole grammar on the, uh, just simple exampling the bull, which was very tremendous, which was very interesting to just simply understand it, how it, it was. But he also defines an early notion of sophists, which uh, uh, would be elaborated considerably by later Sanskrit linguistic like uh, Bhartihari. In uh, Patanjali also, Patanjali uh, uh, Spota, which from Spota is perversed in the invariant quality of speech. The noisy ele element, dhwani, audio part, can be long or short, but the Spota remains unaffected by, in, by individual speaker differences. The single letter or sound, Varna, such as ka, pa, or a, is an uh, abstraction dis distinction from various procedure pro produced in actual in initiations. Uh, it is stated in the uh, Mahabhasha that that the use of correct words uh, with a wrong accent uh, or utterance was considered as a fault, leading to religious uh, demetries, especially in performance of Vedic sacrifices. So he, uh, in Mahabash, uh, only very much focused uh, the, the correct pronunciation and the correct accent of the words. Uh, so the people who are practicing Vedas uh, through the Vedanga to understand the clear pronunciation. In the first uh, uh, Ahnika of Mahabhasya, Patanli wrote uh, two type of purpose, uh, Shabda Anushasana, Vyakrana. Uh, the major purpose and minor purpose. Uh, the major uh, purpose called the uh, God uh, Pariyojana. Uh, they, they are like uh, Raksha, protection of Vedas. Uhu, the modification of the words, Agama is Vedanga. Laghu is a short way to find the Shabda Rupa, to make the Shabda Rupa more easy, easily understandable. And uh, Asande, no doubting of the Sora. So these are the main uh, introductory part of Mahabhasya. So, and there's uh, also after the Mahabhasya, there's also a very interesting work of uh, Patanjali is coming from the Yoga Sutra. The Yoga Sutra are, Patanjali is one of the most famous uh, work at the current moment. People are practicing a lot yoga practices. And uh, of course the yoga practice is not that much uh, popular as a practice of uh, yoga philosophy, but who are interested in yoga philosophy, they are, uh, first come in the practice of Yoga Sutras, uh, which are written by Patanjali around this 500 BCE. Uh, the first Bhashya on Yoga Sutra was also developed by, Mah by, by, by Maharshi Vyasa. But there are arguments that say that uh, probably Patanjali himself wrote the uh, first Vyasa of uh, Yoga Sutra and Vyasa did some editorial work on that Vyasa. So there is a not clear in, uh, understanding information that who wrote the first Vyasa is Patanjali himself or the Vyasa itself. So the Yoga Sutra Patanjali is, uh, is one of the uh, great work in the time period of classical age, which is the golden period and the uh, foundation of uh, Yoga School of Philosophy. In uh, Yoga Sutra, wrote uh, secrets of yoga in very hidden way, only person with a great experience uh, of life and uh, uh, understanding of the consciousness can understand the correct uh, uh, prayojana, correct purpose uh, of the Yoga Sutra. The Yoga Sutra are uh, con uh, considered as a traditionally, namely like eight limbs of yoga, which we call also Vastang Yoga. And also there's talk about the Kriya Yoga in the second chapter. There are complete four chapter in uh, Yoga Sutra, which uh, compiled by Patanjali as Samadhi Pada, first chapter with uh, 51 uh, sutras, Sadhana Pad with uh, 55 sutras, uh, Vibhuti Pad with again 55 sutras, and uh, Kaivalya Pad with 34 sutras. So all together they compile and becoming uh, complete sutra sets, 196. The first sutra, the first sutra, uh, when he started, when he started the first sutra in uh, Patanjali Yoga Sutra, he started with a term like Atha Yoga Anushasana, which seemed very uh, similar to the Mahabhasya first line of uh, Atha Sabda Anushasana in Vyakrana. So sometimes people who are not fa get, getting with this fact that, uh, that they are the same Patanjali who wrote the Yoga Sutra and the Mahabhasya. So one of the, this uh, meaningful relation 
uh, which coming from the first sutra of Patanjali and the uh, first line of Vyakarana Mahabhash, uh, is make more sense that they must be a same person. On the second sutra, Patanjali uh, defined what is yoga and its purpose, what is prayojana of yoga. So in says like yoga chitta vritti nirodha, so yoga, yoga is a practice which uh, uh, completely uh, stop the vrittis, which are the modification of the mind and creating person non-chitta or being just uh, as the vritti are. The first chapter is called Samadhi Path, I told before. Uh, they are very interesting information about human mind, how uh, the mind is uh, always changing and uh, modifying with the vrittis and how a person can reach step by step the, uh, to the Samadhi practice. The, this chapter has basic purpose to understand the main goal of yoga is Samadhi. So he is not just telling to practice uh, asana or practice pranayama. From the very first chapter, he's just talking about the main goal, the main uh, idea for, for what we are practicing, what we have to understand the philosophy of yoga is with the Samadhi Father. The second chapter uh, of the Yoga Sutra deal with the Kriya Yoga and uh, also talk about Kriya Yoga, what is Kriya Yoga? Uh, as the practice of uh, Isha Pranidhyana, uh, Swadhyaya and Tapas. So they talk about the Kriya Yoga here. And also uh, about Klesha, what are the Kleshas which are creating uh, modification in the brain, uh, which are not allowing person to concentrate in the practice of yoga. And uh, the five limbs of Astang Yoga, which are uh, written in the first five, so the first five uh, limbs of Astang Yoga is dated also in the uh, second chapter, not all the eight. So they are Yam, Niyam, uh, Asana, Pranayama and Pratiharyam are the moral disciplines of person who, ever, who, uh, who want to practice yoga, he have to learn these five uh, moral disciplines and the Niyama, the personal disciplines with the practice of Asana later on to finding the right balance and stability, st steadiness in the body and with the practice of pranayama to with the steadiness of your self breathe and pratyahara to controlling or to understanding uh, the inner senses and outer senses more clear the third chapter is start with defining what is dharana what is dhyana and what is samadhi so it's just defining the first three sutra just defining the three uh, later limbs of astanga yoga and all these three together they call here the samyama the very steady concentration, Samyama. And talk about various superpower in this uh, third chapter, which is we, uh, we call as uh, Vibhuti Pada. Uh, Vibhuti itself is sometimes sound like uh, some kind of God gifted or some kind of supernatural powers. And here the Pranali has told how this uh, Siddhis or superpower are coming very naturally to person when he practicing, when he is concentrating with Samyama in uh, various different objects. And, and also he told that this uh, Samyama, uh, during the practice of Samyama, which Siddhis are we are getting, they are not really helpful in the practice of Samadhi. So they're not very much important for that person who are basically practicing yoga for getting Siddhis. They are not going to be helpful for the person. So they are coming just not to have uh, changed the state of consciousness with the Siddhis, but more focused with the Samadhi practice. Last chapter is the uh, Kaivalya Pada. Kaivalya literally means isolation, but uh, here in Yoga Sutra is, pre is Prayojan is a liberation. Uh, liberation is Kaivalya. Uh, in Kaivalya Pada also outline how the mind is uh, uh, made up uh, how, with the different uh, nature and of the self and how to take out the mind with the selfness, with the, with the self-ego, which is uh, called uh, Asmita here. It describes how someone on the yogic path can free their consciousness from the moment of the gunas and allow it to rest in the light of his own nature. So completely um, coming out from the, all the nature of gunas, reaching uh, above to the Anandamaya Kosha and finding the true nature of self with Atman. The metaphysics of Patanjali is built on the same dualist foundations as the Sankhya school. The universe is uh, conceptualized as the two realities in Sankhya school. There says Purusha and the Prakriti, consciousness and the matter. It considers consciousness as and matter, self, soul, and body uh, as two different realities. So the main meta metaphysics of the Patanjali is also built with the Sankhya school. So that's why 
in Sangha school philosophy also there have been uh, study the same books of Yoga Sutra. Uh, <laughs> so thank you very much for listening. With the, I'm very honored to be here as well. My first time, I think I'm uh, been just repeating, uh, reading, reading, and not just focusing all the topics. Um, I'm just learning as as a student. Thank practice, you. Practice makes perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's. I that's give you my thanks. Uh, I have a question. The question might be personal anyway. So you said you are good at mathematics. I try to be. <laughs> okay. So uh, Evgeny is a PhD in mathematics, and now he wants to become a PhD in in linguistics. So that means like he's double bright. So you said that you went to Jyotish because you can grasp uh, the depth of the uh, Vyakarana. So is like Jyotish a bit more smaller than Vyakarana? Uh, well, uh, I must say, like, Jyotisha is a is very big work, it's a very um, big uh, practice, it's, it's, it's very, for me it was very hard. And, uh, What's the difference? What's the difference? I mean, you said you, you are not as good student as you would want it, you to be, but you are well enough in Jyotish. So wh where's the difference? No, I, I will say that I am a student of Jyotisha, not... Uh, a good student of Vyakrana is mean that I have not study very good Vyakrana as Jyotisha. <laughs> because? Mm, because maybe I am more interested in the Jyotisha. Probably. Your father would be proud if you would go the way of Vyakrana. That's why I ask. I mean. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's that's true. That's true. Uh, um, he was start. He was trying to teach me Vyakrana from Lagusitan comedy from the very beginning, from very young age. Uh, I studied a little bit of uh, in the beginning Lagusudanta comedy, and uh, he wrote a lot of books about Vyakrana. What I, age? Uh, what age were you when uh, he started to teach you? He was around 12, 12, 12, Yeah, but I was studying so many different things. Studying a different school, I was studying uh, programming, uh, studying um, yoga also at the same time. So I was in many boards. <laughs> Understood. Yeah. So, but now nowadays I'm uh, also trying more to study uh, Vyakarana. I'm now, when you're married, of course, what else can you do? You study Vyakarana. Exactly. That's what I say. My question concerns, say it in English, sure. about the personality of Patanjali. Uh, still, maybe I missed the information. Uh, or do you consider the authors of Mahabharata? Mm -hmm. and uh, Yoga Sutra as one and the same person or two different authors uh, under the same name because there is a great dispute in scholarly world uh, about some some distinguish even about 10 authors under the name of Patanjali and, yeah. and uh, if if you think that they are one and the same person what are the evidences um, or proofs which you can um, support this opinion. That Thanks. was my, my question as well, so I joined to this question. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, as much I was um, uh, researching on this same topic, because I, when I started writing about this topic, I also had the same question everywhere. They're writing about uh, who wrote the Mahabhash and are they the same guy or they're two different guys? And I was finding a lot of uh, research works on this term and uh, when the Max Muller was the one of the profound uh, scholar, he also wrote that Mahabhasya and the Patanjali was written by the same guy. And But still there, there are the not, not clear information, that uh, not clear proof what we can say that uh, who wrote the Mahabhasya and Patanjali, they are the same person or not. But as the writing of uh, Mahabhasya, when we start reading like Atha Shabdanushasan and also when we read about the Patanjali Yoga Sutra at Yoga Nushasana, how similarly the way they are writing, uh, it sounds very clear that probably they are were the same person. But they're not clear proof, they're not clear uh, information exactly, because uh, the timeline of the both, there are make some time changes because uh, people find the uh, Mahabhasya was written around the second BC. And um, around the same, uh, and the, the Patanjali Sutra, they have no clear timing. There's, uh, they found like between 500 BCE or 400 CE. 
So because of the timeline of the Yoga Sutra, uh, it's very hard to find out exactly are they were the same person or they were a different person. For my belief, I believe they are the same. So, <laughs> Vishnu, we are still waiting for the Supreme Court judgment on this issue. All right. <laughs> it's not I, I, crystal clear yet still. Uh, uh, may, I, may I just add a little bit because I've heard uh, no evidence here as well that it was probably was the not per, not the one person but it was the one school let's say the one school and the same name that uh, was taken by all these disciples there and uh, because we know that in India um, people are not like want to put their name uh, on the text so that's why it was like this but no evidence here as well so <laughs> yes. uh, well it can be uh, uh, maybe sometimes people do like they put the name of their master but uh, even uh, in Mahabhash there was many many names of Patanjali was uh, has been seen there and mm -hmm. um, in Patanjali Yoga Sutra uh, all the commentaries which was said uh, it was talked about almost the same Patanjali mm -hmm. written by other people who are even uh, uh, B.K. Sanger wrote about the uh, commentary on the Yoga Sutra. He also uh, stated that Mahabhash writer Patanjali is the same uh, writer who wrote the Yoga Sutra. So many commentary uh, commentary writer who wrote about commentary on Yoga Sutra, Bhashan Yoga Sutra, they have been also stated they were the same guy. But mm -hmm. when it's come with the proofs, when it's come with the exact timeline, it is very hard to evident them together, to make them together like who oh, are the same people or not. Yeah, okay, thank you so much. Thank you for your presentation. Shiva Santosha Santosha Sarga Shut up. 